everybody and welcome to the holiday edition of the No Zone. My name is Wanja. And I'm Charlie. We're glad to have you with us. Now this is the only place where learning and fun are guaranteed. Now if you had to borrow a book from your school library, how would you ask for it? Well, we'll be looking at that and other things when we explore our two topics for today, polite language and school activities. So these are some of the buzzwords you'll come across in today's show. Polite. Sorry, may I? Please, thank you. Library, flag, assembly, spelling, and writing. Now we will be revisiting your favorite sections from the No Zone. Just make sure that you look out for all the buzzwords in today's episode. Right now though, let's visit Makutano's secret gang, the Junction Juniors, and find out what they're up to. James, you're late again. Hmm? You missed assembly, and your first lesson has already begun. Would you like to explain yourself? I'm sorry, teacher. I was helping. It is not me. I don't want to listen to your excuses. This is the third time you've been late this week, and you're always making up stories. Hmm? Tell me, how are we supposed to believe anything you say? You have to be punished for your lateness. So you stay in class during break time, and you arrange the class library. Teacher, I have to work on my talent show, peace with the rest of my group. Hey, 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 hey. You need to learn a lesson and sacrifice your time. Go! Barakwell plays guitar like last year. Bakari will really miss out. Oh yeah, I'm going to sing. I'm just going to be like red. What about you, Leleti? Are you excited about the play? I don't think so. I just think it's a waste of time dancing around on the screen. Oh, really, huh? Hey, Brian, what are you wearing? This is my costume for the class play. I'm going to be a cowboy. It's better than wearing school uniforms. the best role in the whole of the play. You get to be the hero. Every hero needs a partner. Teacher Pendo said we should learn to work together. But how can we work together if James isn't here? Don't worry, you can practice at lunchtime instead. That way the play will be perfect for the show in the evening. I don't think so. I still think our lessons are much more important. What? Leliti, we have Plenty of time to think about our spellings and grades. Mm -hmm. Come on, let's have some fun. I'm not sure about my math. I never know how to calculate the sizes of areas. Areas are easy. Look at a rectangle. You just multiply the length times the width. So a rectangle that is 3 centimeters by 4 centimeters is an area of 12 centimeters square. Hey, Lele, do you see? You know areas, so you have no excuse not to rehearse at lunchtime. Yeah. Hey, James, wait. Teacher, I've already arranged the library books just as you asked. That was your punishment for being late. But what about your telling lies? I wasn't lying. I'm going to be late for my talent show. Schools are for lessons, not fun and game. I want you to go 
and copy lines from the blackboard and make sure your handwriting is neat. Let's go. Where is James is always late. Ah. And when he does arrive, he'll be full of his made up excuses. <laughs> Let's practice anyway. Yeah. I still think we should be studying. Charlotte, are you sure? This is a great thing. School isn't all about books. Yeah, and children have the right to play. This is an extra activity to make us better students, Lily. Mm. Come on, Lily. Tell us the reason why you don't want to do this. Are you scared? You are scared. I'm not scared. I'm never scared. Uh, let's just go look for yeah, Jeff. Let's go. Go. I'll stay here. Okay. Bye. You see, James, isn't this more fun than practicing for some silly talent show? Yes, teacher. And maybe if you spend more time studying, you'll be able to get a few more ticks and less crosses. But teacher... Carry on with your work. Leleti, are you excited about today's talent show? Teacher Penda, do we have to do this show? Is it that important? I think we should be spending most of our time in class. Leleti, drama and sports are very important to students. Such activities help you develop and grow while learning about life. It's okay to be nervous. I know it can be very scary performing in front of a lot of people. When I was younger, I was shy, and I never thought I would grow up to be a teacher. But then one time I was at a school play, and it really helped boost my confidence. Really? And I'm telling you, it's going to be so much fun. And once you've practiced enough, you'll see just how easy it is. Are you going to be brave? Good. Let's go find the rest. Children, you really think I can't hear you whisper? Eh? I think you all ought to come inside and join James with his copying of lines. Sorry, Chakimanda, we didn't mean to be rude. We are just coming to call James for our play. He's going to be my partner. Not only was James late again this morning, but he was full of his usual excuses. But I was telling the truth. Ah, James, we found you. Madam Pendo, I'm in the middle of punishing James. He organized books, and now he's copying his lines. Oh. Not only was he late again this morning, but he lied about it too. Please, teacher Kimanda, we need James. Otherwise, our play won't work. He'll just have to miss that silly talent show. But teacher Pendo, you've always said I'm important. Sports and plays are for students. And it teaches us to work together. All those activities are important, but so is discipline. I'm afraid James will have to stay behind and finish his punishment. But I was helping someone. Hello. I'm just for the talent show. And what are you doing here? I met with James earlier. He helped me and he told me to come and watch this play that he was performing. I was running school and I saw Snake. He needed my help and I helped him. I was carrying my grill to the Mabuki's party. The handle broke. So James helped me by going back to the town. He came back with the Mkokoteni driver and a rope. I'm sorry if I put you into trouble. I'm innocent. I was telling the truth. Well, Mrs. Kimanda, it seems we misjudged James and we've punished him enough for today. Now, Snake, I think you'll be too early for the talent show. Then I have to go back to my grill. Well, in that case, we just could have an early performance just for you and Mrs. Kimanda. 
That would be amazing. But I don't think Lelit wants to perform in the play anymore. Well, Lelit is more than ready for her performance. <laughs> Enough of your stories. You're always making things up. The hero had grown tired of his partner telling lies and things. I'm telling the truth. Believe me. Follow me. Luckily, our hero was feeling kind and decided to follow his partner. Soon it became clear that the partner was telling the truth. Ha! You think you're better than me, hero? I can defeat you and take over the tower. Don't try to stop me. I have a hostage. Please help me, please! Our hero, with the help of his partner, were able to chase away the evil Babu. There are two of us defending this town. Now leave! And never come back! Amishi was saved, and the hero saved his town. But the partner learned that if you ever tell so many stories, nobody will believe you even if you're telling the truth. That was great, guys. I'm sure everybody liked the talent show. Thanks again, guys, for your great performance. Junction Juniors forever! Yay! Juniors! The Junction Juniors are really amazing. I like their spirit of helping each other all the time. I like it too. But now let's go and find out what the Junction Juniors think about polite language. Shake your Teacher Mrs. Kimanda. Did she do this to you? Babu, did she beat you? I was running to class when I accidentally bumped into her. I was in such a rush that I forgot to apologize. That's when she did it. You should have said you were sorry. I know, but no one has permission to beat me. It's against the law. I'm going to get my revenge on her. You just do it. Revenge is wrong, but no one beats me and gets away with it. That's why I'm quitting the Junction Juniors, so that I don't ruin your reputation. Goodbye. Oh no! Babu's going to get himself into big trouble. What can we do now? I'll go up to him and see if I can change his mind. I'll go with Brian. Me too. Okay, the rest of us should go and inform Teacher Pendo that teachers are beating children at school. Let's go. Go, Junction Juniors! I think Teacher Pendo will believe us. Maybe we should tell our parents and they can confront the school management. That's a great idea. No, 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 no. 
I think we should first tell Chapendo. She's more understanding. And definitely, she'll have a solution for us. Yeah. Let's go back. I'm tired. No, we can't. How do you even know he's going to talk to us? We'll make him talk to us. He's our friend, and he needs us now. And the friend he needs is a friend indeed. I'm so sorry to hear this about Babu. Listen, I'll talk to Mrs. Commander. She's new around here and she doesn't know the rules very well. I promise to sort this out, okay? And I'd also like to have a word with Babu. That way I can go over polite language and manners with him. Do you know where he is? What's wrong? Babu ran off. He said that he was going to seek revenge on Mrs. Commander. Babu! Babu! to get revenge on Mrs. Kimanda. Maybe he's gone to school to look for her. We'd better find him. Otherwise, he might do something he'll be sorry for the rest of his life. Find him before it's too late. for his actions. I agree, but hitting or beating students is not allowed in this school under any circumstances. There are other effective ways of disciplining children without hurting them. Now let me call in Babu so that he can explain his behavior. Babu. Now what you did today was very naughty and very irresponsible. Can you explain yourself? I was so angry when Mrs. Kimanda beat me earlier. I didn't mean to run into her, but she wouldn't listen to me. It made me so angry. But if you had a problem with Mrs. Kimanda, you should have come and told me. I'm really sorry. I believe you, but you must pay for your actions. Please don't beat me again. Of course I won't. Now I want you to make a long list of appropriate punishment methods so that when new teachers like Mrs. Kimanda come to the school, they know the rules. I also want you to write an apology letter to Mrs. Kimanda and to your friends. Babu, it is important to learn how to be polite, especially to your elders, okay? okay. And I also want to tell you something. I am really sorry. 
I should have listened to you and I should not have beaten you, okay? It's okay, Mrs. Kimanda. I forgive you. Okay. Junction Juniors, I'd like to say that I'm really sorry for what I did to you today. I would also like to thank you for letting me join the Junction Juniors, and I hope that whoever takes my place will feel as welcome and happy as I did. You have all been like a family to me. Thank you once again, and I wish you the best to come. From your friend, Babu. Babu, you forgot something. You forgot your photo. You forgot to put it back on the board. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? You're still at Junction Junior. Of course. We never wanted you to leave, even if you threw water at us. It's great to have you back. Go put it, go. <laughs> Babu's revenge was quite scary. That's right, but I'm glad that he learned his lesson about seeking revenge and that it's not the best way to solve conflict. That's true. Right now, though, let's jump to Chapendo in Hot Numbers. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Hot Numbers. What has it that you've improved tremendously in maths? Is that true? Yes! Good. Now, last week, we learned about perimeters. Oh, oh yes, I remember. Perimeter is the total distance around a figure. Very good. Now today we are going to learn about area. Area? What? Do you mean area like where I come from? I come from Nairobi National Park area. No, Marara, nice try, but that's not the answer. The area I am talking about is the space covered by an object or a shape. We call this space or surface the area. Is that clear? Yes! Good. Now, in front of me, I have a newspaper page and a square of a paper. Now, which one is bigger? Yes, Wanyaga? The newspaper page. That's right. The newspaper page is bigger. It has a bigger surface, meaning it has a bigger area. Now, I have two leaves here. Now, I will call this leaf A and this leaf B. So which one has a smaller surface area? Yes, Mwenda? B. B. So B has a smaller surface area. Now let's look at how we can measure area. I have two different size papers and I have some exercise books. Now I want you to place some exercise books on the paper and cover the surface, okay? And then you will tell me how many papers, how many books you will have used to cover the surface. Now you can do this at home too. Uh, if you have a newspaper and some books, just cover this and measure the area. Are you through? Yes. Yes. Okay. So how many books have you used to cover your paper? One. Two, three, four. Very good. How about this side? How many books have you used? One, two, three, four, five, six. Now this group has used more books to cover the paper because this paper has a bigger surface area. Now area is measured in square units. Now look, I can use these square papers to cover this exercise book. Then we will count how many squares we will have used to measure this book. So let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 
20. Very good. So this book is 20 squares. I like covering things with squares to find the area, but what if it's too big a surface and I don't have enough squares? Well, that's a very good question, Marara. Now, we can measure area by either counting the squares on the surface or we could multiply the number of rows by the number of columns. Now, let's look at how this manila paper was covered. Now, how many books did we use to cover the length? One, two, three. Very good. How about the width? One, two. That is correct. We could multiply the length times the width. So three times two. What is our answer? Yes, Jake? Six. Very good. And how many books had we used to cover the paper? Yes, Mwangi? Six. That's right. The area is six unit squares. We always measure our area in unit squares. Okay? Yes. Now, we have found that area is length times width. Now, let's have a go at working out the surface area of this rectangle. Remember, we need to multiply the number of columns by the number of rows. Now, let's count the length. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Very good. Now, let's count the width. One, two, three, four. So, we need to multiply twelve by four. And what is twelve times four? 48. Well done, everyone. Good work. Now remember, area is? The space covered by an object or a shape. Well done. This was interesting. Now, we'll be taking a short break, but don't go anywhere because when we come back, Maspiti is going to be taking us on one of his exciting trips. Shake your Welcome back. Now join us as we find out where Maspidi is taking us this time on Out There. Hello everyone. Can you guess where I am today? That's right. I'm in Mombasa in the coastal province. Oh, Mombasa is so hot. I'm so thirsty. I wish I could climb up these palm trees and take one of those coconuts so that I can drink its sweet milk. Oh, look, there is someone selling coconuts. I'll tell him to give me one. Give me a coconut! Give me a coconut now! Ah. Why won't he give me a coconut? I'm thirsty. Ah. Oh no, I've been rude. It must be the sun. It has made me forget to use polite language. I must apologize. I'm very sorry, sir, for being so rude. Please, may I have a coconut? Thank you very much. Please, will you open it up for me? Thank you. The white part is called the flesh, and the liquid inside is called milk. But it doesn't come from a cow. The coconut milk is very sweet and refreshing. I wonder what else we can use coconut for. Come with me. Let's go and find out. I have come to Tiwi, near Mombasa, to meet the Tulisubiri Women's Group. These women use coconut to make many different products, which they then sell to make a living. One of the products they make is lotion, to keep your skin soft and smelling sweet. Let's go and find out how they make lotion from coconuts. First of all, the women remove the soft outer skin of the coconut. This is called the husk. Inside is the hard nut. This is the important part. Good. 
Next, they cut open the coconut with a panga. Then they grate the white flesh into tiny little pieces. Once the women have grated plenty of coconut, they put it on mats to dry. Once it has dried, they gather it up and it's ready for the next stage. Good, good, good. This is a pressing machine. It is used to squeeze the oil out of the coconut. Can you see the oil coming out? Wow, it's hard work, but lots of fun. When they have squeezed out all of the oil, they then pour the oil through a sieve to remove any dirt. Then it's ready to sell. I'm going to buy some coconut lotion. It smells beautiful and will make my skin lovely and soft. I'm very grateful to the kind women for making me feel so welcome. They work so hard, but have lots of fun too. They were very polite too. Goodbye! visiting some very friendly people, and I'm sure you will love them. This is Thika School for the Blind. Eyes are very important parts of our body. They let us see all that is happening around us. You know, I've always wondered how the blind are able to do their stuff when they actually can't see. But we can find out that and much more. Come on, people, come with me. The headmistress tells me that Thika School for the Blind hosts over 200 children from all over the country. However, each kid here has a different story and they all need special care and attention. Even though most of the times they depend on well-wishers, the school takes care of them and gives them a good environment where they get to share and learn. While most of the pupils use a guiding stick to help them walk down the corridors without falling down or hitting objects, some have mastered the path so well that they know where and when to cross. Let us clap for him. Mm, it's break time, people. Let the game start. I'm told since these children can't see clearly or nothing at all, their sense of touch and smell is very good. Sound is very important for the blind since it guides them. For instance, this ball has jiggles that make some noise as it is thrown. Isn't that impressive? Here, their favorite game is goalball and they love it. Now that the kids can't use a pen to write or learn, during lessons, they have learned how to use Braille. The Braille is a special machine that has patterned dots that represent all the letters and numbers. One uses their fingers to punch the letters or the numbers they want on the paper to form a sentence. Another writing tool they use is slate and styler, used just like a pen and a paper. Hey, look, I'm trying. I'm trying to learn how to use one too. But it's not as easy as it looks. Have you met Wairimo yet? Wairimo wants to be a musician when she grows up. This must be very challenging. Let me help out Wairimo. It is not as easy as it looks. 
but maybe with a few more lessons from Wairimo, I will learn how to even write my name. I really wish Wairimo all the best. Maybe she will be one of the greatest musicians in the world. Oh, I wish I could spend more time with these kids. But because I have to go and milk my cows before it's too late, it's now time for me to say goodbye to my special friend Wairimo and of course everyone else. Bye! The children at that school are really, really brave and I wish Wairimo all the best. Me too, Charlie. Now that should always remind us that disability is not inability. That said, I think it's time for us to go and continue our learning with Teacher Pendo in the Learning Zone. Hello there and welcome back to Cool Words. Today we are going to learn about verbs in the past tense. Now who can remind us what a verb is? Oh, I can, I can. Yes, Marara? Verbs are describing words. No, 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 no. Describing words are called adjectives. Now can you tell us what a verb is? Oh, I remember now. Okay. A verb is a doing word. A verb is a doing word or an action word. Now who can give us some examples of verbs? Yes, Yasmin? Jumping. Jumping. Yes, Ayuma? Laughing. Laughing. So jumping and laughing are action words, things that we do. What does past tense mean? Just think about it, Mara. I'm sure you can be able to work it out. Now let's help him. Who knows what past tense means? Yes, Ayuma? Past tense is something that has already happened. So when we use a verb in the past tense, we are talking about an action that has already happened. Exactly, and when we use a verb in the past tense, we have to change it to show that it has already happened. Now let's try and work out this sentence. Today I play in the garden. So which is the verb there? What am I doing? Oh, I know, I know. Yes, Marara? You're playing. So playing is the verb. That's right. Now, how about if I changed it to this? Yesterday, I played in the garden. Do you notice how the verb to play changes? Yes, yes, yes. I can, I can. Yes. He added an E and a D at the end of the verb. Oh, you're a clever lion. So we added an E and a D to the verb to make it a past tense. Now, can you tell me what is wrong with this sentence? Yesterday, I laugh at the teacher. That sounds all wrong. Of course it sounds wrong. So what should we say? Yes, Diana? Yesterday, I laughed at my teacher. Good. So how do we change the verb laugh? Oh, Marara? simple. Just add an E and a D at the end. That's right. It's as simple as that. To change a verb into the past tense, you just add an E and a D to the end. Oh, yes, I get it. But I wouldn't laugh at you, teacher Pendo. Good. Now, shall we play a game? Yes! yes! Okay, now I will give you some sentences which have a space for the missing verb. Now I want you to pick the correct verb from this one here to complete the sentences, okay? Yes! Remember, if something has already happened, then you must use the past tense. Are you all ready? Yes! Now my first sentence is, this morning I are the pictures in the book. Mm-hmm. Yes, Yasmin? Looked. Okay, so this morning I looked at the pictures in the book. So looked is in the past tense. So the next sentence, yesterday he, the ball into the goal. Kicked. Okay, that's right. So, Marara, can you read the sentence for us? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, he kicked the ball into the goal. Good. Now, my next sentence. Last week, she... the vegetables. Mm-hmm. Cooked. That's right. So, last week, she cooked the vegetables. Now, to the next sentence. I... in the river. Fish. Good. So I fish in the river. Last year, I over the fence. What shall we use? Jumped. Jumped. So last year, I jumped over the fence. And to the last sentence, I hide and seek with my friends. 
play. Mm -hmm. Play. So I play hide and seek with my friends. Well done, all of you. You chose the past tense when something happened in the past. Now, can you see what the verbs in the past tense all end in? Yes. They all end in ed. Right. So when a verb changes to past tense, it ends in ed. Shake your Today's lesson was really easy, but how good are you in spelling? And how fast can you spell? Let's get on with it. Animal, Animal. chapter, building, narrow, building. respect, respect. deep, vegetable, work. 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 Welcome to Spell It. Mwangi, Jatelo, and Mutanu. You're about to step out of the shadows and into the light. You will compete for the top prize of the Nozon Spelling Champion. If you win, you will go home with your very own Nozon Dictionary. Each contender has just 30 seconds to spell correctly as many words as possible. If you want to hear the word again, simply say repeat and the word will be repeated for you. Now the more words you spell correctly, the more points you have, the greater your chances of winning. Are the rules clear? Yes. Wangi, you're up first. Please, take your place on the spelling zone. Wangi, your 30 seconds start now. Draw. D-R-A-W. Tick. T-I-C-K. Games. G-A-M-E-S Notice N N O T I C E Subject S U B G E C K Spelling S P E W L I N G Uniform U U N I F O R M Assembly A A W S E M D Y Well done. Well done. Please step back. Jatelo, you're up next. Kindly take your place on the spelling zone. Jatelo, your 30 seconds start now. Flag. F-L-A-G. Study. S-T-U-D-Y. Ruler. R-U-L-E-R. -E Eraser. E -R -E -R -A E-S-R. Lesson. L-E-S-S-E-R-S-O-N. -S Whisper. Pass. Handwriting. H-A-N-D-W-I-T-I. Time is up. Well done, Jatelo. Mutanu, you're up next. Please take your place on the spelling zone. Mutanu, your 30 seconds start now. Mark. M-A-R-K. Pupil. P-U-P-I-L. Brick. B-R-E-A-K. Shelf. S-H-E-L-F. Library. L-I-B-R-A-R-Y. Present. P-R-E-S-E-N-T. Calendar. C-A-L-E-N-D-E-R. Educate. E-D-U-C-A-T-E. Schedule. S C H E D U L E. Activities. A C T I V I T I E S. Time is up. Well done. Well done. In third place, we have Jatello. Let's give him a round of applause, please. Round of applause. Well done. Now, in second place, we have. Mwangi, which means our winner for today is 
Mutano with a total of nine points. Let's give a round of applause, everyone. Congratulations, Mutano. You are today's No Zone Spelling Champion. Show everyone your dictionary. A round of applause. Well done. Thank you. Animal, animal, chapter, building, narrow, building. respect, respect. deep, vegetable, work. 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 Hello, everyone. Welcome to Spell It. Ayuma, Diana, and Ajulu. You're about to step out of the shadows and into the light to compete for the top prize of the Nozon Spelling Champion, in which the winner will go home with their very own Nozon Dictionary. Now, each contestant has just 30 seconds to spell correctly as many words as possible. If you want to hear the word again, simply say repeat, and the word will be repeated for you. The more words you spell correctly, the greater your chances of winning. Are the rules clear? Yes. Ayuma, you're up first. Please take your place on the spelling zone. Ayuma, your 30 seconds start now. Sad. S A D. Agree. A G double R E. Mean. M E A N. Please. P L E A S E. Proper. P R O P E R. Forgive. F-O-R-G-I-V-E Satisfied S-A-T-I-S-F-I-E-D Apology A-P-O-L-O-G-Y Time is up. up. Well done, Ayuma. Well done, Ayuma. Well Please done. step back. Diana, you're up next. Please take your place on the spelling zone. Diana, your 30 seconds. Start now. Kind. K I N D. Sorry. S O W R Y. Accept. A W C E P T. Excuse. E X E X C U S E. Manners. M A W N E R S. Welcome. W E L C O M E. Greeting. G R E W E T I N G. Discipline. D I S C I P L I N E. Behavior. B B E H A. Time is up. Well done, well Diana. Done, well done, Diana. Well done. Ajulu, you're up next. Please take your place on the spelling zone. Ajulu, your 30 seconds. Start now. Rude. R U D E. Greet. G R W E T. Wrong. W R O N G. Polite. P O L I T E. Mistake. M I S T A K E. Pleasure. P. Could you repeat? Pleasure. P L E A S U R E. Friendship. F R I N D S H I P. Sympathy. Thumbs up. Well, well done, done. Ajulu. We won't waste any time. We'll get straight to the results of Spell It. I'm going to give you your results in reverse order. In third place, having spelled six words correctly, we have Ajulu. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> Diana Ayuma. The difference between the winner and second place was one word. Ayuma, you spelt the word agree with double R. You got seven points and you are in second place. And that means that our winner, having spelt all eight words correctly, is Diana. Let's give her a round of applause, everyone. Well done. Well done, Diana. You are today's Nozone Spelling Champion. Show everyone your dictionary. And another round of applause, please. Were you able to keep up with the pace? Well, if you want, <laughs> don't get stressed out. Why don't we enjoy a relaxing African tale before we go off and join Ranger Rukia in the Wild Zone. Hey! 
Hello everyone. I am going to tell you a very special story. It's about the disobedient Wanzela. Don't forget to listen out for this week's buzzwords. Once there lived a young girl known as Wanzela. She had been orphaned at a tender age when her parents died from an incurable disease. Then a loving old woman who had a spare bed in her humble home adopted her. The old woman lived with her old husband. They had never been able to have children of their own, so they were overjoyed when Wanzera went to live with them. They treated her like their own daughter, and together they took very great care of her. They fed her, clothed her, and taught her many fun games, as well as how to spell and draw and have a neat handwriting. However, despite all this loving care, Wanzela did not grow up to become a good girl. She became greedy and disobedient. Although the old couple doubled their love for her, Wanzela did not change. She was always in trouble for whispering in class and for even missing assembly. One morning, Wanzela was asked by her father to return some books to the library on her way to school. She was not to take long as she needed to be on time for school assembly. Hastily, she grabbed the books and headed off towards the library. But as she walked, she thought to herself, hmm, today I will test all the fruits in the forest. And so she headed off into the forest looking for wild fruits. She climbed one tree after another. She was so happy that she forgot about being on time for assembly. In fact, she was bored of carrying the silly library books, and so she left them on the ground near a fruit tree. All day, Wanzela explored the forest, eating delicious fruit. She was so happy that she didn't notice that it was even getting late and the sun was setting. As she wandered through the forest, she saw a beautiful gray egg. She picked up the beautiful egg, curiously turning it over in her hand. Then she exclaimed, I will eat this too. I love eggs. Just then, Wanzela remembered the library books. She began looking for them, but she couldn't remember which tree she had left them under. Forget them, Wanzela said to herself, sitting down to eat the beautiful egg she had found. She removed it from her pocket but just before breaking it, she heard a voice. It sang to her. Please don't break me. Eat me whole. Swallow me in one piece, and you'll never grow old. Greedy Wanzela swallowed the egg swiftly in one big gulp, shell and all. Immediately, Wanzela began to feel very, very sleepy. Darkness covered the whole land and Wanzela fell into a deep sleep in the forest. Back at home, the worried couple looked everywhere for their daughter. All of the teachers said Wanzela hadn't been to their lessons. She hadn't even been in assembly. All the old woman and her husband could do was pray. The next morning, a farmer found Wanzela fast asleep under a tree in the forest. She was snoring loudly and her stomach was swollen very, very swollen. The farmer who had heard about Wanzela going missing picked her up and carried her to her worried parents. As soon as she reached home, her parents called the doctor who examined Wanzela's swollen stomach. The doctor was shocked to feel something moving about inside her. Wanzela was still fast asleep when the doctor gave her some medicine, which meant she didn't feel a thing when the doctor pierced an opening with a sharp knife in her stomach. And can you guess what the doctor saw inside Wanzilla's stomach? Three small, ugly-looking snakes. Wanzilla had swallowed a snake's egg. The doctor almost passed out with shock, but she worked quickly to remove the baby snakes and to stitch up Wanzilla's stomach. When Wanzilla awoke, she was weak and very, very sorry. She hugged her parents long and hard and apologized for losing the library books and for skipping school. She promised them that she would never, never be greedy and disobedient again. From that day on, Wanzela never missed another assembly. She always made sure her uniform was neat and tidy, and she always obeyed her loving and kind parents. The end.
Well, wasn't that a great story? It teaches us never to be disobedient to our parents. Well, that's all we had time for today, but I look forward to seeing you again soon. Goodbye. Hello, Nose on Rangers. I am Ranger Rukia. Can you see that small, lovely looking animal moving around the rock? That's a honey badger. It is a very shy animal. Don't make noise. It might hear us and run away. Honey badgers have been known to be shy animals for many years. It is very hard for one to see a honey badger as it runs and hides itself. They live in holes under tree roots and in old termite mountains. They are nocturnal animals, which means that they mostly come out at night. The honey badger has a very interesting color on its body. It has a white stripe running from the head all the way down to the tail. The lower part of its body is black. It looks like it's wearing a long white thin coat that only covers its upper body. Honey badgers are heavily built with a broad head, small eyes and a small nose. They have very small ears on the sides of their head. They have strong short legs with claws for digging holes when hunting and a stout tail. The male honey badger is bigger than and weighs more than the female honey badger. Unlike humans, honey badgers don't live together in families. They like living alone or in pairs. They marry for life just like we do. Interesting. They only come together when there's a big feast for them to eat. The honey badger loves feeding on honey very much. But it also eats fish, snakes, birds, rodents, for example rats, and some vegetable foods. Honey badgers have a very good sense of smell. They use their noses to hunt animals and insects living underground. They sniff inside holes where they find rodents, snakes, and worms that they feed on. Sometimes, they use their claws to climb up trees in order to find food, for example, eggs and beehives. Even though it is very shy, the honey badger is also very fearless. It has been known to fight off other strong animals like the lion and the leopard. They often brave the sting of hundreds of bees to get their tasty honey. They have strong jaws that help them fight and can release a bad smell from their rear that chases away the enemy. Sometimes they are even stung to death by bees when they raid their hives. Farmers who have beehives also kill the honey badgers when protecting their farms. By conserving the honey badger's environment, rangers like you and I can not only protect the honey badger from harm, but also protect the land of our farmers. Interesting. Bye! I thought our friend Marara was the most shy animal on earth. We were definitely wrong, Wanja. Oh yeah, today's lesson was really good and we learnt a lot. And we're glad that you were here to learn with us. Bye! Bye.